Hello, and welcome to the fourth of these little chats about Dasim. This one concerning AC simulations. Now, this might be a bit premature, because we don't study AC circuits until the spring term. But for the sake of completeness and keeping everything together, I'll just run through how you simulate these in Dasim now. Uh, don't worry if some of these things don't make sense. Just remember that this video is here and come back to it when we got as far as analyzing AC circuits in the module. Okay, let's have a quick look at some AC circuits. This time we'll be putting on a AC voltage source, one of these. The AC source Wow, that's big. Um, AC source comes in with one of these little twiddles. A, a, it's meant to look like a cycle of a sine wave. It's indicating that the voltage source here is not a constant one volt. It is, in fact, something that goes up and down from this point here. will be alternating one volt above this point here and one volt below this point here, going up and down regularly with a sinusoidal type of shape. Um, let's just put that across a resistor. I'll grab a resistor here, make it vertical, wire it up, and we now have an AC source. Now, at the bottom here, we have a little warning, which if you can read it, says, warning. Simulation is in DC simulation mode, but there are no DC sources. All voltage and currents will be zero. This is a very common problem or issue when you first start doing simulations. If I hook up a voltmeter at the moment, the voltmeter would read zero, and this might be puzzling because this looks like we have a voltage source, a one volt voltage source here, and yet the voltmeter is reading zero. What's going on here is that in DC simulation mode, the voltmeter is measuring the average voltage. But, but this is an AC source. So the voltage here is going up to, to plus one volts, down to minus one volts, up to plus one, down to minus one, up to plus one, down to minus one, and so on. The average voltage across this voltage source is naught volts. If I want to know what the maximum voltage is, then I need to go into AC simulation mode. And that happens under sim controls, click on AC analysis. And now my voltmeter reads one volts at a phase angle of zero degrees. Phase angle? This really isn't going to make a lot of sense until you've studied phasers. Um, but maybe just sort of try and note that that zero there means that the voltage here is in phase with the voltage coming out of this voltage source here. If I plotted the voltage across this voltmeter against time, just like an oscilloscope does, I would get a display that looks like this. The voltage at this point here is going up and down to plus one and minus one volts. Now, if I make this circuit a little bit more interesting by putting a capacitor into it there, Uh, the phase angle is no longer zero. It's my, now 89.6 degrees. Um, let's make this a bigger capacitor. Nine degrees. Okay, maybe that's overdone it a bit. 100 nano. 57 degrees. Okay. Um, that 57.9 degrees indicates that the oscillation measured by the voltmeter is out of phase with the oscillation measured by a voltmeter placed across the actual voltage source here. Let me put both of them on the graph and show you what I mean. Okay, the purple one is the voltage coming out of the voltage source. It oscillates from plus one 
to minus one, back up to plus one, back down to minus one. The blue one is the voltage across the resistor. Its maximum value is 532 millivolts. That's the peak value here. The 57.9 degrees indicates how far the blue is ahead of the purple. It reaches its maximum value before the purple reaches its maximum value. Its minimum value before the purple reaches its minimum value. We represent that by a positive angle here, 57.9 degrees. That's around about one-sixth of an entire cycle ahead. We can also plot these on a Argand diagram using complex numbers. Uh, we call these things phasers. These sliders here will scale both the phasor diagram and the oscilloscope type display here, both in terms of its voltage and its current. You can pl plot ammeter currents on this plot here as well. Um, other things to note, this little arrow, um, this little checkbox here, turns on a tool tip. You can make, maybe just see that I can now read off the real and complex part of any phaser where I put it. Um, these little checkboxes down there, they don't really do anything at the moment. They are for um, future expansion. Um, don't worry about those at the moment. What else do I need to say about AC simulations? Oh yeah, frequency. The performance of any AC circuit like this is a large function of what frequency it is operating at. At the moment, we're operating at one kilohertz. It says so down here on the bottom left part of the display. If I go under sim controls, I have these set of sliders here, for, which allow me to set that frequency to something different. The top slider is a fairly coarse frequency change. Goes up in sort of one, two, five, ten, twenty, fifty sort of intervals. Once you've got it close to where you want it, the second slider will allow you a, uh, a more accurate setting and the bottom slider an even more accurate setting there. Supposing I wanted to get to exactly 900 hertz, I might set the top slider to um, around one kilohertz. This one to as close to 900 as I could. About there. And then try and set this one to get to around there. Okay, that's not too bad. But if I wanted exactly 900, the best way is to just click on this, delete it, type in 900 and press return. And it will take me to exactly 900 hertz. Um, clear design. Yeah, does what you might expect. Deletes everything on the design. I think that is all we need to know for now about AC analysis. I'll come back to looking at frequency responses and step responses a little bit later, once we've started to cover those in the module itself. <laughs>